Bruh, I know y'all are here to learn about some early season schedules. Let's talk about week one off the rip and how Prize Picks has Matt Stafford's line at 0.5 passing yards. That is what we call a free square in the industries, sir. Prize Picks has week one lines up. This is literally only staying up for the next 35 hours. If you're watching this on Monday, June 20th, you're too late. What we're going to do is pair Stafford 0.5 passing yards with... And let's segue into the video. Jonathan Taylor, 95 and a half rushing yards. He plays Houston in week one, homies. Do you know what he did against Houston last year? He made him his sisters. The Houston sisters, or what they were called when he walked out of that fucking stadium. 145 rushing yards and 143 rushing yards. Those are his game yardage totals against Houston last year. This should be 129.5. What is you doing, prize picks? I don't care. It's easy dub for us. The rest of the team, the rest of the squad's out here fucking eaten all right so we're going over on this we're going over on this september rolls around you probably forgot you threw this bet down because it expires in the next two days you forgot you hit this and you're collecting money off it throw 25 down win 75 and the beautiful part about it if you're a first-time depositor you haven't used our promo code yet bdge whatever you throw down they're going to match it up to 100 bucks all right so if you want to throw 100 bucks down they're going to give you 200 if you want to throw 10 they're going to give you 20 and you could throw 20 on this boom and walk away with 60 bucks this is the lock if i've ever seen a goddamn lock I feel like we're in a damn key store right now so that's that let's get into the actual video i gotta change the settings on the camera real quick i'll be biking in a second I have no idea if that did anything, but I do know a little bit about this fantasy football thing, and that's why y'all are here today. We're going to learn about some of the easiest early season schedules for running backs. The schedule's been sitting there for a minute. We want to let it marinate. We want to let the draft go by. We want to let all the free agent changes happen so that we know the rosters of the defenses. We know what we're getting into at the start of the early season, but you'll know what we got to do first. We got to tuck our shirts in. Y'all have got to stop yelling. Let's see. Now, first up on this list, we're just going to parlay, no pun intended, that prize picks parlay into our first team. And that is the Indianapolis Colts. We see they got Houston in week one, Jacksonville, KC, Tennessee, Denver, Jacksonville again. So they get to play against Jacksonville twice in the first six weeks against Houston. Sure, there's going to be improvements along a lot of these offensive or defensive lines. There's going to be improvements. A lot of everyone says every team gets better every single year. It doesn't happen. A lot of these teams stink. So as I said before, Houston last year, JT had two games against him, 143 and 145 on the ground. I'm telling you, man, you want to talk about regulations in the gambling space? The fact that Price Picks was allowed to put that line up to just give away money to y'all, you love to see it. So KC, Tennessee, Denver are all mediocre run defenses. Tennessee was pretty good last year, but I don't expect KC or Denver to be anything like super special. So I would say JT's got a beautifully easy slate to start off the year. Those first two games, he might pop off a 350 total yardage there, and you just love to see. There's no real actionable takeaway here because JT is the 101 regardless, and we're not doing anything about it. Let's move on a little bit, and we're going to see a little bit of a theme for the next two, and that is basically the NFC East because the teams in the NFC East kind of stink. So when you get to play against stinky teams, you get a stinky schedule, and that's good for the running backs. Now, the Washington Commanders, I've been on record about how much I do not like the idea of drafting Antonio Gibson this year. I want to stay away from him like he's the herpes, man. I just don't want that man scrounging in my lineup. I don't want him in my bed. I don't want him anywhere near me. But it's hard to argue against the early season schedule here, man. What this looks like to me is a super beautiful sell-high target early in the year, okay? Because I got two concerns, right? It's J.D. McKissick taking the pass-catching work. We haven't seen them give that to him yet. And then it's Brian Robinson taking over some early down work, which he's not hes not really able to afford giving away any work at this point in his lackluster start to his NFL career. And Brian Robinson is going to be a little bit annoying. Maybe he takes goal line work. But for the most part, if we're going to be objective about rookie running backs, they don't tend to contribute much until the second half of the season. So this kind of works in a lot of different ways for Gibson in the fact that if you do end up drafting him, he should be an easy trade piece for you. And he should perform pretty well at the beginning of the year. I mean, they start off with Jacksonville. They start off with Detroit, Philadelphia, which will be a much improved run defense, Dallas, Tennessee, Chicago. You're looking at basically four of their first six matchups are against bottom five run defenses. 
And by the way, this run defensive rank is per PFF. This is their premium grades. They do a premium grade for run defense, pass defense, overall defense, like coverage specifically, offensive line blocking, uh, offensive line pass blocking, run blocking, whatever. So this is their run D rank from last year. And again, I know there will be defensive shifts, but the overall theme of these schedules are that this is a really, really good one from Washington. So if you want to draft him and then trade him after week six, you've got that shit queued up for Antonio Gibson. Same thing with Mr. Miles Sanders. Again, an NFC East combatant with him. Starts off with Detroit, the single worst run defense in the NFL. Last year, Minnesota was bottom 12. Washington was really, really good. Remember when we went into the year last year expecting Washington to be an absolute like elite defense and they were just terrible for no reason? Their run defense was awesome over the last, like, you know, the first quarter of the year was probably bad and people got that in their heads. But after that, their run defense was amazing. So I expect them to be really, really good. But after that, Jacksonville, Arizona, Dallas, all shitty run defenses. Okay. So you're looking at five of the first six matchups against bottom 12 run defenses for Miles Sanders. Can this be a committee? Maybe. But I do think what happens a lot of the time when it comes to running backs, especially for fantasy, we see hot starts because teams have this idea or this theme of how they want to operate the running backs in the beginning of the year. And it typically doesn't go to plan, all right? So th- I-, I could see a world where they're just like, we want Miles Sanders to be the starting back. Let's give him 18 touches a game for the first month, month and a half. So for me, it's hard to be in love with Miles Sanders at this point. He hasn't put anything together. He's shown us flashes, and you want to say like, oh, he had zero touchdowns last year, positive regression. It's like, yeah, he had zero touchdowns last year because they gave other backs goal line work, and Jalen Hurts got a lot of the goal line work. Like, there's a reason why he did. It wasn't just unfucking lucky. How many goal line carries did he have? It wasn't 15, 20. It wasn't top five in the league in goal line carries. He just wasn't good at scoring them when he did get them, and they gave him away to other players. So I think Miles Sanders could start off very, very hot. And he could be a potential sell high opportunity guy. And if you look on prize picks right now for week one, they've got a Miles Sanders lineup, 59 and a half rushing yards week one against Detroit. I kind of like that because Miles Sanders is a big play guy. When he's healthy, he's been able to rip off 50, 60, 70, 80 yard runs off of one carry. And Detroit's a really shitty run defense. So I like that. I like Sanders starting off a little bit hot and then being able to sell him afterwards. On the flip side of things, we have the Houston Texans who are probably not going to start off hot because they play against the Indianapolis Colts, which were one of the best run defenses in the NFL last year. They have speedy linebackers. It's tough to run against a team like that with those quick linebackers. So I expect them to struggle pretty heavily outside the gate. But after that, they've got Denver, Chicago, the Chargers, Jacksonville, a bye, Las Vegas. So the schedule eases up a ton right here. And I guess the takeaway here is like, you're not going to be able to start any of the Houston Texans running back, but don't panic immediately, right? Listen, I, I love Damian Pierce, but I also like Marlon Mack. If Damian Pierce starts going in like the eighth round and Marlon Mack is a 15th round player, like forget about Rex Burkhead. There ain't no fucking chance Rex Burkhead is touching a fantasy lineup of mine this year. But the other two guys I'm intrigued with, okay? And I think the overall notion here would be like, listen, If you want to take a shot at one of those guys later, don't panic right off the rip if they struggle in week one or struggle the first two weeks because the schedule softens up. And I think as we get further and further into the year, you do see guys like Damian Pierce and rookies play a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. That adds up well for this little formula here. So nothing to do week one really with this team, but just hold on to them if you do draft them. And the last team or the last group of players on this list would be the Cleveland Browns, man. They get the first five weeks of the season against teams that I am just not scared of. You have Carolina, New York Jets, bottom three run defense last year, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, bottom five run defense last year, and the Chargers, man. So this is kind of a beautiful thing for a few reasons. One, it's just a soft schedule altogether. Two, Cleveland's going to be without Deshaun Watson. So if they were to play against, right, if Jacoby Brissett's their starter, if they're playing against high power teams like Kansas City, and obviously the Chargers are on the list there, but they're the fifth team of that first schedule. If we only stuck to the first month of the season, it'd be even more beautiful. If they were playing against teams like Kansas City or even more high-scoring teams, you know, ones that will perpetually put up 30 points a game, Tampa Bay, shit like that, I'd be more nervous. But these are teams where even if Jacoby Brissett is the quarterback and they're putting up 20 points a game, none of those teams, Carolina, the Jets, Pittsburgh, or Atlanta— are going to run a game script away from Nick Chubb. Like Nick Chubb's obviously a guy where if they get down, they're putting Kareem Hunt on the field. That's even if, you know, at this point, this might be a cold take, but Kareem Hunt could get traded. That would obviously be huge for Chubb, but none of those teams in the first four games are going to run a score up on Cleveland, which means Chubb is going to be able to stay on the field for four quarters as well as play against a team 
with shitty run defenses for four quarters. Obviously, Pittsburgh is not a shitty run defense. Carolina's improved on the defensive side of the ball. But overall, again, not any teams that I'm really nervous about having my fantasy players start against. Okay, so just want to get this quick video out there for y'all. Make sure you know which running backs we should be targeting early, which ones we should be looking to trade off when they do have early success. A few different directions I can go from this. Do y'all want to see me do this with wide receivers? Do you want to see me do the flip and say, you know, the, the worst schedules early on in the season, maybe some um, some trade target opportunities based on the first month or six weeks of the, uh, the season, all that kind of good shit. We are going to do a bunch of stuff like that going forward. So let me know which ones you want me to prioritize and then subscribe to the channel if you're new, because obviously you will see those videos rip off and make sure you go take advantage. People, please, it's free money. Go take advantage of the prize picks 0.5 line right now for Matt Stafford. And these things expire, all right? This is 36 hours left from when I'm filming this fucking video, okay? Which means you got to have notifications on. They put these lines up randomly. I get notified, and then I want to tell y'all, but it happens quickly. So if you don't have notifications on and you watch this video late, you're going to have a problem. So hit that little bell button down below. Hit the subscribe button down, the, down below. Hit the link that takes you to prize picks down below and use promo code BDGE when you do so. They're going to give you a 100% deposit match on the Stafford and Jonathan Taylor over. We love to see it. I love to see y'all and hopefully y'all will love to see me bike here tomorrow. We're doing a live stream mock draft. So again, turn the noties on and life will be good. I love y'all. I'm out.